So welcome to snacking out and I, excuse me, snacking and, and eating out with diabetes. I really appreciate you being here today. Um, it's almost the holidays for those of you who celebrate. So happy holidays. And my name is Andrea Nikolai and I work with the University of Florida in the extension in Polk County and I'm the family and consumer sciences agent. I'm also a registered dietitian. So the chronic disease, nutrition, diabetes classes are something that I specialize in. So if you haven't used chat very much or the Zoom at all, you can usually hover on the top or the bottom of the screen, like mine are actually on the top right now, the different controls, and you can find in the more section, there's a dot, 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 more, and that's where the chat box is, and feel free to type in any questions there. After this, I'm going to send a short evaluation and I really appreciate your feedback because I look at them. I've looked at all of them you guys did for this previous year to try to help me figure out how I can make these presentations better. So the feedback is really helpful. Okay, so the most important goal, right? So if you, so what we're gonna try to get, on, get to the point today, the most important goal if you have diabetes, um, the MyPlate identify foods that raise your blood sugar, quick, easy, nutritious snacks for diabetics. What would you choose at a vending machine if you're faced with that? Um, and then what would you choose if you're eating out or getting takeout? And so even if you don't have diabetes, this class is definitely for you also, because I, you know, these things, all these habits would be great to have, even if you don't have diabetes, because they will just help you to be healthier and live longer in life and help prevent diabetes. So the most important goal. So it's kind of like if you do have diabetes, it's like a three-legged stool. And so you want to try to keep your blood sugar level even. You don't want it going up a lot. It's really hard on your body. And that's when it starts to um, damage your nerves and your cells and things like that. So people sometimes lose their feet and things like that. And it's because you know of the damage of the high blood sugar level. So if you can keep that level lower, that will help a ton. So that's what our goal is with the food here because you can really do a lot with the food. And so you do this, it's like a three-legged stool. You do this by balancing what you eat, your activity, because your activity will also affect your blood sugar level and your medicine. And that's if needed, you know, if you can't do it with the other two things. And so um, sometimes like if we don't have diabetes, then your body can manage um, whatever you eat and you can keep it at a normal level. But if you have diabetes, that's when your um, body can't do that as well anymore. And it, so it starts to get high when you have a lot of um, foods. So, so that is the biggest thing I would say. So meal planning really lets you take control while eating um, good tasting foods too. So we got some, you know, celebrations possibly, you know, coming up or just even if it's with yourself, but just, just if you can think about this then and trying to plan this out. So what is the biggest part of what you eat that has the biggest impact on your blood sugar? So blood glucose is the same as blood sugar, okay? So whenever I, people say that glucose, it's a type of sugar. So it's um, saying blood sugar. So does anybody know if you can get to the chat box and you want to type in what um, it's either carbohydrate, protein, fat, or alcohol, which one do you think has the biggest impact on your blood sugar? Which of those? Yeah. Yes, you guys got it. It's, it's the carb. So the carbohydrates and some people call them carbs for short. So these things give us energy. So that's why we need these foods. That's why you want to eat them. They taste good. So we'll go through what they are. But just these are the foods that would raise your blood sugar. You know, the protein and the fat, not as much. Alcohol can, yes. Um, but that one's kind of tricky because it raises it and then can crash it too. So that one, you just got to be a little bit careful. But carbohydrate is um, the one that would raise your blood sugar. So you're like, what is, has carbohydrates then? So which things have it? So it's a lot, right? You're like, isn't that everything? So it's all the breads, the pastas. That's Those are the ones we think about, I think, the most. Like the breads, cereal, crackers, pasta, 
um, our stuffing, cornbread, casserole. So these are all starchy foods, like the potatoes too, they're starchy vegetables. And you know, all these things can have a lot of nutrients. It's just that they will raise your blood sugar. So you just have to be a little bit careful. So potatoes, corn, peas, and beans. So those are the beans I'm talking about that you have to cook for a long time, like kidney beans, pinto beans, black eyed peas, even, even lima beans. The ones that don't aren't starchy are the green beans. So it kind of um, can mess people up, but the other, but they don't, you know, require that quick cooking or that long cooking. So all fruits and fruit juice. And that makes sense if you think about that fruit and fruit, you know, they have natural sugars. So that's why they do it in milk. Milk and yogurt have natural sugars too. So it's not their fault. They just have, it's just in dairy. You know, sometimes yogurt adds extra and that would be the one you'd want to avoid. And then sweets, you might have thought of that already, but that would raise your sugar then. So if you have a sugary drink, that will make your sugar go up. And candy, cake, the pies, things like that, and fruit drinks. So, um, you probably are wondering, you know, what is left now for me to eat. But the thing is, you just want to balance your plate with these things. So you want to choose these things on part of your plate to give you that energy and keep your blood sugar, you know, so you feel like get, you have that energy, but you don't want it too high. And, you know, if you have a really, really high blood sugar level, I almost, you know, would say if you could work with a dietitian then, and try to see maybe you would even um, really slim down this section a lot for a little bit, just to try to get it better under control. So there could be meals where you wouldn't even have carbohydrates, okay? And that's definitely fine. So then the foods, like just to give you an image, sometimes, you know, pictures can help people, I think. So these foods would all have carbohydrates then. So if you have any of those, um, in your house and you're going to enjoy them, just know that any of those would would raise your blood sugar, okay? So which foods don't have carbs? So these are some of the examples. So things like um, the meat and the meat substitutes, and then things such as um, Eggs and cheese and then fats and oils, they don't have it either. And these foods shouldn't affect your blood sugar. So it's kind of, um, you know, Jackie was talking before the webinar, but if I gave her um, that whole carton of eggs or that whole, um, you know, bottle of olive oil and told her to eat it and we checked her blood sugar before and after, it would be about the same. Whereas if I were to give her a cake or even um, potatoes, they, you know, it would go way up. So these foods, it's interesting if we can balance our plate with these foods and um, some other ones, which would be these foods, which are especially important, then um, we can really manage our blood sugar. So that's why it's really cool. You can just um, kind of split your plate with each and then it'll help you throughout your day. So the idea is you don't want a ton of the carbohydrates for sure because they would just, you know, raise your blood sugar without these other things slowing it down, if that makes sense. So there's non-starchy vegetables and you're like, well, what is the point of even eating non-starchy vegetables? You know, so these things, they, all those different colors, they provide nutrients for us to help us prevent disease and they go in your body and kill off bad things. And so that is why we want to make sure to have the vegetables. So you know, you might think, oh, I just need like really the protein here and maybe I'll have some rice with that. But um, really try to get those vegetables in. Not only do they do those things I mentioned, but they help you feel full and satisfied. And plus they add color to your plate and it looks really pretty. But I'd say the full and satisfied is probably what you are looking for. And then also the taste. So these things do add a lot of flavor. So just little impact on your blood sugar. And they're filled with vitamins, minerals, fiber, helps you feel full, right? And then they just don't have that many calories. So they can help you manage your weight, which can be really helpful. So you know how we were talking about the starchy vegetables. And so you're like, okay, so how do I remember, you know? Well, if you can think like all the other vegetables are pretty much non-starchy. So we have anything from, we got broccoli, you could have cabbage, all you could eat, carrots, cauliflower, celery, coleslaw, 
cucumber, eggplant, greens, so like collard greens, um, things like that. And if you add some smoked turkey with a collard green, say, you know, that would be one food that wouldn't raise your blood sugar. Mushrooms, okra, onions, peas, peppers, pea pods, excuse me, peppers, radishes, rutabaga. I have some listed here to help me. But just any of those dark leafy greens, any of the peppers, tomatoes, you know, those. Um, and then summer squash. So that would be the yellow squash, crooked neck, and then the zucchini. Those don't raise your blood sugar. So the starchy ones, the starchy vegetables, you might have thought of already potatoes. You're like, okay, I kind of get that. That's starchy to me. Um, so sweet potatoes, they're starchy too, right? So these foods are really good for us, even normal potatoes. Think about if you eat the peel, there's vitamin C in that potato and potassium. So it's not like they're bad for us. It's just that they could raise your blood sugar. And sometimes we tend to put not so good things with them. But okay, so we got the potatoes, right? And then if you think corn and peas. So corn, if you think about it, you know, we make cornbread. So it kind of makes sense that it's, um, you know, could raise your blood sugar. It's um, a grain. And then um, the peas. So the ones like the frozen peas, those are the ones that would raise your blood sugar. And so they just happen to have a little bit more of that energy. Whereas something like the pea pods or sugar snap peas you might have seen or snow peas. If you like um, sometimes Asian foods, they have those in there. Those won't. And it's crazy, isn't it? It's just different um, variety of the peas. And then green beans. So that would be another one that wouldn't raise your blood sugar. So if you're thinking about just meals coming up, you know, green beans would be a good one to put on your plate. Asparagus, the, um, if they have any sort of salad, definitely put that on. And I would just say, watch the toppings, you know, right? Because if they had croutons, that would be a bread and that could raise your blood sugar. So here is like, so on the left is kind of what we recommend for just, um, you know, we teach everybody in school and just for the um, normal American, you know, we're like here, you need to have, you know, this proportion of fruits, vegetables, proteins, and grains. And then things on the right then, so that would be a plate for um, just anybody who's looking to better manage their weight or um, just, it's great for anybody actually. And just having like the fruit then more as snacks or something like that, or having that in place at your starch. So the things on that right plate that would raise your blood sugar would be that starch, that little fruit off to the side, and then the dairy. So it's kind of cool because say you get three servings at each meal. And so you can kind of mix those up then, depending on what you want. So I want you to get a variety of foods. So that's why they have the three different ones listed there. But say some meals, you just, you know, maybe you're going to skip the milk or the, you know, the yogurt and or the ice cream. And you, you just want to have double fruit instead. You want to have um, like that cornbread we were talking about with a bunch of strawberries, like, a you know, maybe two cups instead of one. And so that would be how you would balance your plate then. So we'll kind of talk about this more then, but just, I want you to get the idea. So, you know, for holidays coming up, you know, even New Year's, right? Um, if you're thinking about these things, if you want a dessert, so desserts would be a sweet and that would raise your blood sugar, just like that starch, the fruit and the dairy. So they're, be, they're really concentrated in sugar. And so it's like you get a smaller amount, but I would say if I really wanted the dessert, I maybe would skip that for that meal. I would try to skip like maybe the starch, you know, and maybe have the fruit for a snack or something like that and just try to save up, you know, my carbohydrate section for that, for that dessert then. But just remembering, you know, you could do that every meal that, you know, you balance your blood sugar, but you're also probably going to gain, you know, like some weight or some unhealthy heart, which you don't want. So that's why you could do that all the time and manage your blood sugar, but um, not really recommended <laughs> as you can guess. So somebody was talking about edamame. That would be great for the charcuterie board we were talking about. She's right. And that would raise your blood sugar a little bit. Um, yeah, the soybean, it would be, um, it has a lot of protein which would help it add a lot of fiber. So it wouldn't raise your blood sugar as fast as some of the other foods. 
So it's kind of one of those, I'd almost say it's in the middle, you know, it's like in the protein section, but also, um, and probably not as starchy as some of the other like kidney beans, pinto beans and stuff, but I would have to double check, but that would be an excellent food. Golly, yeah, it might even be lower in carbohydrates. I'll, I'll try to check that one out for you guys, just to get back to you on that. That's one food, I think it's kind of in the middle, which is why it's hard, hard to remember that one. Okay, so the plate then, just what we were talking about, you wanna try to fill half of it, like the idea, half of what you're eating with non-starchy vegetables. So those would be those things like, you know, you could have tomatoes, cucumbers, celery, carrot sticks. So definitely go at the veggie tray, right? Um, things like that. And then a fourth of it would be that lean protein. So the idea would be to get not like a fatty steak, but maybe more of like a turkey breast or fish or chicken or, you know, eggs. And then edamame would be a great choice. And then a fourth of it with those starchy foods. So edamame might crowd on over to that starchy um, section. So if anybody doesn't know what edamame, it's uh, soybeans and they're in a pod. So, um, and you don't eat the pod, but you eat the beans and you can get them at different restaurants and they're, they're actually really delicious and really good for you. They can help your heart. So it's a good one. And then, so then, and then adding, you know, the dairy to make sure we get the strong bones and then a fruit to, to get those vitamins and things like that. Plus it's a sweet dessert. So the idea then overall, you'd want to eat more vegetables and fruits, nuts and seeds, beans and lentils and whole grains. So they found that people who eat those, if you have diabetes and you eat those, even if you have those starchy beans, they found that those people live longer and do better. So it's like they could raise your blood sugar, but things like that just really would help you. Okay, so that's a lot about that, but let's, um, let's talk about snacks, which is why we're here, right? <laughs> so snacks, they're a great opportunity to fit in another serving of those things that we wanna have. And so that's really what I want you to do. Um, if you have diabetes or even if you don't, it can help with sustainability to help hold you over longer. If you could pair like a protein with um, the produce or the fruits or vegetables. So that would be one of the best snacks, I would say, just for extra holding power. You want to make sure to get some sort of protein, usually, or a healthy fat in there. So you might think olives could be a good snack, actually. And having that with something else would be great. But just really trying to get in the vegetables or the fruits when you can, because in America, we don't get enough of that. So. So here's some ideas on how you can make combination snacks. And you don't always have to have two together. You know, if you're not that hungry, that's fine. But just, um, especially if you're diabetic, if you're having something in that grain group or the fruit group or the dairy group, you know, these things would have a little bit more carbohydrates and it can actually help keep your blood sugar lower if you have it with some sort of protein because it doesn't make it go up as high. You know, your body's having to digest the other stuff too. So. You know, with that being said, you know, if I were, you know, I always talk about like a chocolate cake or something like that. But if you don't have diabetes, if I ate that whole cake, my body would know what to do. You know, it'd be like, whoa, okay, seriously. But it would know it, how to handle it. But if you have diabetes, um, it would just make your blood sugar, you know, go really high, you know, even with the fat in the cake, which would slow it down. Um, but it would be better for somebody with diabetes to eat that cake throughout the day then, you know, so if they were going to have it, it would be better for them to have it in small amounts throughout the day to, to like balance it out with something else to keep the blood sugar, um, fairly even versus having like a huge spike. So that's why you want to try, you know, when you do have those carbohydrates, having them with something else can avoid them from just going up. And that's also why you choose whole grains too, because they don't raise it as much, even if you just do have a piece of bread. And here are some ideas of how you can do two things together to help with that holding power and help with um, help manage diabetes then. So it's like if I were to have an apple, that would be an excellent snack. If I were to have it with peanut butter, the fat, the healthy fats and the proteins in the peanut butter would help that apple not um, increase my blood sugar as quick. It's like your body might try, you know, but then the peanut butter would slow it down because it has to digest that too. 
So if you can get those two together sometimes, and milk is a cool one because milk has protein in it and then it also has those carbohydrates. So sometimes after races, they say some of the best recovery drinks is actually chocolate milk because it has extra sugar, right? For just to restain like um, a racer uh, runner and then also that protein so it can replenish the muscles. But just interesting, so with us then, maybe not the chocolate because we don't need the extra sugar or, you know, use unsweetened. And then um, crackers and tuna would be a good one or grapes and string cheese. So you see how you can, if you can try to incorporate a produce thing like celery and peanut butter or celery and hummus then or celery and edamame um, would be a good one. I think edamame would be one of those kind of like milk where it'd be balanced out by itself. All right. So you're going to the vending machine, you're really hungry, or you running into the gas station and you're like, I'm on a road trip because um, you're driving because you don't want to fly and you need snack ideas that are healthy. So do you guys have any ideas? What would you get at a vending machine or a gas station that might be a better option? Jackie said nuts. Marissa said some sell fruit and veggies. Yeah, that would be a good one. You know, I've actually seen some of the Wallas. They have like veggie cups with hummus. That would be a great one. Uh, popcorn. Yes. Also, oh, it's got that trail mix. Popcorn would be a good one because it's a whole grain. So it has that fiber. So it would like at least stop you a little bit. And then peanut butter crackers. Yeah, usually they're white crackers, but you could, you know, better than the alternative candy bars. You guys are doing awesome. Yes, string cheese, excellent one for the cheese pack because cheese would not raise your blood sugar. I know it's in the dairy section. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? But um, it has so much fat and protein that it wouldn't um, do that like the other foods. So here are just some ideas. You guys listed them pretty much. It's really awesome. Um, way to go. So try to choose those things. And I say, you know, some gas stations aren't as nice and they don't have fruit or vegetables or things like that. And that's where you, if you could go with those nuts or the seeds, you know, like sunflower seeds or things like that, that would be a, a healthier snack definitely than, you know, just grabbing chips or even pretzels because pretzels are just um, made of a white flour and they would be lower in fat, which could be good for a heart, but just, you know, for your blood sugar sake, it could raise it pretty quick. So here I went to uh, the board of county commissioners. It's downtown in Bartow. And I was trying to look for a healthy snack just, you know, because I wanted to see what everybody who works there would have, you know, what you could find. So it's, um, I don't know if you can see it, but it's down there. There's some options anyway. There's peanuts and a trail mix and there's, um, yeah, those would be the main things I would say <laughs> looking at that. But um, yes, you want to stay away from probably the top shelf, the second shelf, the third shelf. Probably the fourth shelf <laughs> and the bottom shelf too, it looks like. Yeah, the Danish down there. So um, I guess you just have to search them out, but really um, trying to take your own snacks would be a great option. <laughs> and then here just, I was in Gainesville, Florida, and they just happened to highlight that they had some healthier options. And so I don't know if you see those pistachios, those would be a great snack. And then those um, peanuts up there, pretty good. You know, they do have the honey, which would raise your blood sugar faster. That granola bar, not bad. And there's a wholesome mix. And even that beef jerky, you know, if it doesn't have a lot of saturated fat, could be a healthy snack, um, especially for a diabetic because it would have that protein then without a lot of the unhealthy um, fat. So just thinking then, a diabetic-friendly snack that could work for you. So if you guys can just think about that. Um, yeah, what might work? That just, I just want you guys to be thinking, but it could just be something like chicken noodle soup, you know, because it has the chicken to help hold you and then it, hopefully you could add extra vegetables. <laughs> so that would be a good one. Or I always, you know, I go to like the apples and peanut butter, things like that, but those are just easy ones or like nuts and grapes, or have, making your own trail mix with some popcorn then, or something like that. And so now we're getting to eating out. 
So that would be another one. So you either are eating out, you're getting takeout right now, whatever you decide to do. And even if you don't get takeout right now, you're, you started cooking more at home, this will help you get an idea of the best foods to choose, okay? So remembering the plate then. So you got to remember this, you guys, when you go out to eat, okay? Because a lot of times I think we think about it or we don't think about it. So say you go to a, like a steakhouse, right? And they give you a big piece of, you know, something. Hopefully it's, um, you know, like a lean source of cut of meat. And then you have a starch with it. Say they have rice with it and then they serve potatoes and maybe they put bread on the side. So you're missing out on those non-starchy vegetables that will really help you feel full without filling up on that other stuff, okay? So the keys to eating out would be to plan ahead then. You know, we know what you're getting into. So really try to think about what you could ask for. Maybe you can swap out something. You know, a lot of times they can swap a vegetable, like a non-starchy one for a starchier one. And then planning ahead. So asking for what you want. So just, you know, they will do it and take charge of what's around you. You know, you, you're paying. So, um, you know, see what they could do. Maybe a lot of times, like they can easily... If you're getting a salad or something and it's only with um, um, fried shrimp and you're kind of like, okay, this salad looks really good, but I don't really, I know I shouldn't have that fried shrimp, you know, just ask them if they'll broil it or boil it or, you know, grill it for you. And a lot of times they're like, yeah, sure. Especially if they have it somewhere else on the menu. So choose those foods carefully. So when you're looking at the menu, then there are certain words you can look at. Um, and that can signal high fat, high sodium, low fat, low sodium. You know, there's certain words on the menu that can actually help you. So does anybody want to take a guess at what um, some menu keywords would be? Creamy. You guys are getting good snack ideas in that chat. I'm going to have to look at that. <laughs> okay, so creamy would be, yes, definitely one. If it's creamy, you probably want to stay away from it. Saute, so that would be, I would say usually that's in the healthier section. It depends on what it's, yeah, no. So I would say you could be better with the, the saute. That's a good one. Fried in butter, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, you could. Okay, so just, um, these would be just some ones to look out for, I guess. If you see this in front of the menu dish that you're getting, I would say really try to balance it out with some good vegetables and try to eat better the rest of the day, rest of the week, okay? So fried, deep fried, battered, if it's battered, Alfredo, if they're like in the butter sauce, um, cream cheese, smothered cheese, those things just kind of watch out for. And then the ones that would be a little bit better for you would be like stir fried. You got to be careful sometimes with these too, but you know, in general, they tend to be a lot better for you than the other ones. And, you know, stir fried Chinese, you know, I think about that and, you know, it can have a lot of great broccoli, you know, there's that broccoli and the chicken in there. And so you're like, I'm doing awesome. You know, I don't even have a carbohydrate except until they give me the rice and the egg roll. But do you, um, do you think about that then? It's just the sauce that's getting you there. Okay. Because they often put a lot of sugar and fat in that sauce. So I've actually had them just hold that sauce, you know, if you're not getting it where it's already prepared, just on the side and you can add it in or just even if they could just put it on part of it, um, it can, you know, really get that flavor throughout that whole thing and you won't get all those, um, all the blood sugar, you know, that increase from that sugar. So that's why that one. So restaurant, dish, you know, questions, you know, how is this prepared? You know, does it have a lot of this? You know, sometimes with the soups, you're not really sure if it's uh, brothy because you would want to avoid most of the times the creamy soups. So you can ask if you're not really sure. And then, you know, could I have it grilled or baked? And then um, could I have the salad dressing on the side? That's an easy one. And then is there another way this could be prepared? You know, maybe they can just do it differently without um, making it so smothered, right? <laughs> and so here are some general ideas, right? So we've really gotten, um, you know, larger, which you guys have noticed, but um, with our sizes and sharing a meal can be a great option because that makes it so that if you really wanted those smothered nachos at the beginning of the meal, you know, if you share it with all those people that are with you, um, 
you know, hopefully less than 10 now, right? Um, or five or two, but just um, sharing the meal and then asking her for a to-go box, choosing low fat, you know, fat-free options when you can and choosing calorie-free drinks. So if you are a diabetic and you drink anything sweet, like sweet tea or lemonade or fruit punch, these things just have added calories without any nutrients with them. So even if you're getting a white piece of bread, you know, there are some nutrients in there that they fortify them um, with a few things to try to make them healthier. But, and you're also getting energy that, um, yeah. So you're getting some of these grains, but like something just like straight sugar, it doesn't have any benefits. They can't find anything. I wish they could, right? It would make life a lot, you know, here, have your sugar, but really, so then they're empty calories. So that's why choosing calorie-free drinks could be the best change you could make for this new year coming up. And then just some uh, smart choices when you're going out to eat. Obviously, kids' meal would be great, even for adults. And watch the condiments. Ask for a side salad or fruit instead of the fries. Most restaurants, like all those drive through places, they have an alternative for those fries. So don't be afraid to, you know, don't think that the fries just automatically have to come with it. You can get apple slices, apple um, fries at one of them. You can get man and orange cups. I think Subway, you can get a yogurt. Just thinking about those things and then choosing things like McMuffin versus the biscuit or um, yogurt parfait, whole grain toast when you can. And then um, the snacks like you guys are talking about. So one thing I just want to say is like we were talking about, just be aware of that sauce. <laughs> so it's like, you know, with the special sauce, that's usually sometimes where it'll get you. So I was looking at um, just even like a hamburger or a Big Mac. But the, when they add the bacon, right, it adds an extra 100 calories. The cheese adds the extra 100 calories. And then the Big Mac sauce by itself adds 100 calories. So just getting it without the Big Mac sauce would help you. You know, if you could put that on the side and just choose how much you wanted, that would be a better change to make. So just kind of watch those sauces, okay? Especially if they're the creamy, things like that. And then tips then, so the ordering food to go. So it's kind of like, in a way, you know, this has helped us maybe get into that routine a little more. Because if you do order food to go, if you have it at your house, say you have Chinese takeout at your house, then usually, usually, you know, you might not get enough vegetables with that, right? So you could actually, you know, take that Chinese takeout, take a bag of steam in the bag broccoli, stick it in the microwave and just mix it in with the other one because it'll take on that sauce already, right? But you're getting way more vegetables. You're getting a bigger amount. You'll probably have some great leftovers, but just really try and then because we're at home, use that to your advantage and then, you know, have a salad with the Olive Garden takeout or something like that. And then stick with the light menu. Don't be afraid to special order. Remember the big picture. So just looking at these two options then. So here's meal one, and then there's meal two. And you can kind of see the difference between the calories. You could have two of the meals on the right plus more for the meal on the left. So really trying to think about just, you know, at a fast food restaurant, just a plain hamburger would be one of the better choices, I would say. And then there's, um, you know, if the person on the right would have gotten something other than fries, they would have gotten closer to the my plate because the fries would be another starch then that would raise your blood sugar. But just looking at the difference. And here too, I just have to show you guys, if you have diabetes, you're looking at the carbohydrates, right? To raise your blood sugar. And so you don't always, you know, some people who have diabetes, they're like, I'm looking at the sugar right away on the nutrition label. The thing you want to look at is actually the carbohydrates, okay? Because the sugar will definitely raise it and raise it quick, but sugar is a type of carbohydrate. So it's under the carbohydrate section. So the carbohydrate already has the sugar included in there. So that one would be the one you'd want to look at because it also has a starch in there too, whereas the sugar doesn't have that. So if you look at the top one, the middle one, or the bottom one, it's like, you know, it's actually the top one that would have the lowest amount of carbohydrates. So just kind of, it's crazy, isn't it? But just sometimes the healthier thing 
might have more carbohydrates. If you could swap, because that Subway bread on the bottom, like each one of those, like the top of the bun, the top of the bun on that Big Mac, say, is like about um, one serving of carbohydrates. You know how where you're saying pretend you have get three, which is about what a meal a woman would get three to four. And so the top of the bun, middle of the bun, and the bottom all count as one. So I, when we were doing the my plate, there's that starchy section, there's that fruit section, and the dairy section. It would take up all three. So then the bottom one, the top of the bread there, see how it's like double? So that would be like one, two, three, four. So that'd be four right there with the bread. And so I was just looking, um, and we'll get to it later, but the flatbreads and those wraps actually have more carbohydrates. So um, sometimes people think, you know, I'm, I'm just going to wrap, you know, it's thinner, but they really wrap it a lot of times. <laughs> so here's just an idea about if you're going to a restaurant. So if you have diabetes, just look at like, I guess the calories, the fat, right? Which would be the second column. And the saturated fat is the one that's hard on your heart. And that's the third column. And then there's the last column farthest right there. And that's, those are the things that would raise your blood sugar. So if you look at it, like a second one down there, a fries, it would have 29 grams of carbohydrates. So that equals um, 15 would be equal to one of those sections on our plate. So that would be two of our sections on our plate. You know, I was talking about the big back, big Mac, the top of the bun has one, you know, the middle and the bottom. So it's like 15 plus 15 plus 15. Okay. So that would be three servings. So every 15 is a serving. So even like, if you look at the bottom one, that sweet iced tea, then, I mean, you're, you're using a lot of your servings right there with a the drink. So just remember that. Okay. So trying to switch that out then. And here's like a way you could do that differently just by getting different things. That makes sense. And trying to look at um, the total carbohydrate different and the calories, look at the calories difference. You guys can do this, okay? Just even one of those swaps or just going a little bit smaller can really help you, okay? And here's just um, some examples. You see how they all have about the same amount of carbohydrates there. So I was talking about the flatbreads, you know, they're about comparable to rolls. So they have like the, the rolls on there, they have more air, so they might seem larger, but they're not, um, not so much different in the carbs. But one way, you know, just to try to get that, you know, this definitely the six inch or smaller, and then um, really trying to balance it out that and just knowing you're getting a lot of carbohydrates. Somebody told me once when, he had diabetes, you know, he was saying um, he gets those public sandwiches a lot. So he actually just because, you know, he knows the bread, you know, is going to raise the blood sugar, he kind of hollows out the bread. And that would be one way to do it. And I would just because I'm um, don't really like wasting food, I would say, you know, if you could use that for something else like stuffing later or something like that, but just way, um, I guess, to decrease the carbs then would be one option. And then um, also, if you are having those carbohydrates, choosing the whole grains, then that can help your blood sugar not go up as quick. So, you know, how we were talking about the Subway. If you were to get the white bun versus that um, the whole wheat or the honey wheat, even just it wouldn't raise your um, the white one would raise your blood sugar quicker than that other one because the whole grains have that fiber. So you got to remember that they're your friend. OK, so thinking about Olive Garden, then. I just look at the sodium, you know, Elizabeth, I think she had mentioned salt before, um, but just like they recommend per day, a lot of us are at 1500 milligrams per day and the max like for the general population then is 2300 or less. And that's one teaspoon of salt. And look at that chicken Alfredo, that's almost like a teaspoon of salt, just that's almost our whole serving right there. And look at the fat grams and the saturated fat. So I would say, you know, like, Chicken Alfredo is one of those creamy ones, you know, some people love it. And so splitting that or taking half of that to go can be key and really trying to get the red sauce when you can, okay, save you a lot. So red versus white. And then here's Pizza Hut. So just to get an idea, kind of give you an idea, the thin crust um, 
way better for that. But if you're going to eat, you know, way more slices, then just thinking about that, you know, maybe. Yeah, so I would say the best pizza, you ask for extra sauce, half the cheese and double the veggies. And then trying to get things for your heart sake, like even Canadian bacon or hamburger or chicken would be better than um, some of the other options. And then um, swapping out something like um, the fettuccine then for a red sauce then would be a better option. You can see how you can go from the calories in one there and really reduce the saturated fat and the sodium by doing that that way. So that would be really good. And so just to recap then, when you're eating out, you wanna look for those menu signals and then you know, just trying to remember also um, to be assertive, you know, ask for what you want. There can be, you can, delicious and nutritious can go together, okay? So it doesn't have to be one or the other and you're kind of sacrificing. Just think about those ways that you could do it. You know, maybe you're really happy with something else that would be a healthier option or you just, um, you know, you could share with some people or take it home. Or if you are taking that chicken Alfredo home, just, you know, like what I was talking about, the frozen broccoli, you know, maybe add in a bag, right? You can add a bag right in there and use that rest of that sauce and, and for your benefit. And then that's all I have for you today. So I kind of talked quickly, but I just want to, I guess, I think one thing that could be really helpful is if you just think about, you know, if you do have a holiday coming up, how you could make your plate half vegetables, those non-starchy ones would be key, okay? So thinking about what they might have, Brussels sprouts would be a good one. Winter squash is starchy. So you gotta be a little bit careful with that. Pumpkin pie, definitely <laughs> starchy. So um, just thinking about the desserts then, if you want to have them, really try to cut back on like the corn casserole, the potatoes, the stuffing, those things, because those would also raise your blood sugar. And um, so things like turkey and ham will not raise your blood sugar. Collard greens won't. Try to think of what might be traditional foods. Try to avoid the bread. Have a salad if you can. Bring a salad if you're going somewhere. Bring a veggie tray. Like most of those things on the veggie tray would be freebies for you. So trying to think. If, are there any questions about that? Like what foods might you encounter and which might raise your blood sugar so that you know which part of the plate, you know, in your head they would go on. And you can mix your whole plate together. It doesn't have to be like half and half like that. But just um, remembering about half, looking down at your plate, you know, and remembering, you know, is this cranberry sauce? Is this, you know, is, this would raise my blood sugar. So what is not raising my blood sugar and trying to make it half of things. Um, what if you drop your sugar? What if, okay, what would you suggest to bring it up? So if you do have a low blood sugar level, um, then it's kind of like you would do the reverse of everything we've talked about. So I would say, you know, if you have white crackers in your purse, that would be a way better option than some whole grain piece of bread or something like, you know, a juice, orange juice, a little bit of soda, a candy bar, a candy bar without, um, without nuts or fat. So like gummy bears would be a great thing. You know, you um, carry a little pack of fruit snacks in your purse or with you if you sometimes get low blood sugar, but those things have pretty much straight sugar. Okay. Kind of like um, orange juice or something like that, where it's just a lot of sugar coming at us. And that would be one thing to get you um, if you did get a low then. And then I would say, you know, you only want to do one serving of that. So you don't go overboard and then kind of see how you feel after 15 minutes. So they call it the 15 and 15. Okay. So one serving. So it'd be like, um, I guess six ounces of juice then, or, um, you know, having one of those packs of the gummy bears, or even just, if you have it, if you're at your house, um, just getting some sugar and eating it would work. So let me see if there's some other, I see some other questions, but I do have like, that's all, I have for you and then I'll send that evaluation. I just wanted to say I have a class coming up called Beyond Sweet Treats. And so that could be fun. It's around February, but just talking about different fun things that we can put on our plate that would be, you know, the nutritious but delicious also. 
And then um, here were some of my resources then. And I have to show you, this is um, uh, somebody who knows a lot about these things. Also, she's a master food and nutrition volunteer, but she mailed me a picture of her plate. And that's actually Seminole pumpkin there, not sweet potatoes. And then she has broccoli. And then she did um, a chicken roasted with some herbs in the oven then. So that's, um, that's it. Okay, so let me see what I have for questions here. Um, Baked bitter melon. Yes, that would be a good one as a side dish for sure. Sounds good. Be fun to try. Okay, so I'm just getting back up looking at what some of you guys said. So edamame, yes, edamame, the really. Okay, so edamame should be okay in moderation because of the fiber. And he's right. It's because it has fiber. Those beans have that fiber and protein, and it really helps balance everything out. And then same thing with the healthy fats like avocados or nuts butter. If you have avocado toast, that would be a healthy fat to put on your toast. And that would really help balance out that toast. That would be a great, great snack, actually. Um, and you guys are getting good ideas. On granola with yogurt, yes. Watch the sugar in the granola sometimes. But yes, that would be a good one. And then also, uh, Steve says he does banana with peanut butter. That would be a good one. If you guys have ever, if you have a mixer at your house, try that banana ice cream. It's just, you take the banana frozen, right? Like he's talking about there, freeze it. Um, and it's like ice cream, yeah. Or you can take banana slices and then you just put them in a blender and then, um, you know, cream them up and you can add in like cocoa powder and things like that. So cocoa powder wouldn't raise your blood sugar because it has no sugar in the plain cocoa. So let's see. Okay, so we were talking about the charcuterie board earlier. So that is on our Polk um, County website page. And so um, I also did a class on that. So I think I have a YouTube recording on um, apps and mocktails for the holidays. So, but I think I was just talking about something different for that charcuterie board. You know, I'll send if you guys would like, I can send, I have a handout I found um, that's pretty good on charcuterie boards. I'll send that to you, just like on things that you can add to that. Because I know we got the holidays coming up. Okay, so baked biller melons. All right. Yeah, Merry Christmas, everybody. So that's all I have for you guys today. And thank you so much for joining. Um, yeah, happy holidays. <laughs>